before neuro evolution we you know uh, you can see on the slide here that you know we are homo sapiens evolved like that and you know they let we evolve from chimps and why not we do do that with neural networks in the last two decades 2000s and uh, 2010s so a lot of games are being played and the internet is you know ruling the world and changing the world as you know today it is of you know facebook comes up social media comes up everything is coming up so how did it actually you know impact uh machine learning or ai or neural networks you know these are video games right so a video is a continuous set of frames and where each frame is an image and an image is nothing but a matrix from go, to go from one matrix to another is you moving from one frame to another you're just doing some matrix computations all right specifically in video games they noticed that the same sort of matrix multiplications are required for machine learning while they were pushing the performance of gpus and everything towards gaming that accidentally did it for machine learning and then the whole nvidia cuda started and this geforce rtx and all these things got invented and now we have like superpowers at our hands with machine learning so now we you now we have machine learning right and we can do classification and uh, you know we have we can do that with images we can have text and we can do sentiment analysis on that and then we have speech recognition you know you have your google ai assistant or the siri you know apple iphone siri and the amazon alexa and what not and then even even on videos the bottom right if you notice it's uh, detecting actions from videos directly where does neuro evolution comes in so the problem with traditional machine learning approaches is that we have a, a particular way in which we define neural networks and you know it depends upon the expertise of a person of a machine learning engineer to define the neural network architecture which is called as a topology topology of the network and the output is heavily determined determined by that architecture and it depends upon the experience of that person to actually give you a better architecture so that you can solve a machine learning problem well but that is not an optimal approach by the way this sort of uh, you know network that we see here on our screen this is actually called as a fixed topology network so it's not modifying or evolving over time the problem is that i have two input uh, you know two inputs at the start and uh, on the first layer i have five neurons yeah on the second layer i have five more neurons so who said that this is an optimal architect optimal architecture why don't i have 500 neurons here and a 1000 in the second one i mean no one said that and it's obviously hit and trial and then we say that okay this is a good algorithm and this is a good uh, approach Uh, this is a good artificial neural network so neuroevolution as a field focuses on developing different artificial neural networks over time evolving and so there are methods of evolving neural networks and they rely heavily in the very starting i'll let me explain you what you know reinforcement learning and markov decision process is about so you know uh, for example let's take the bottom most uh, bottom left the case in in this uh, a humanoid robot in an artificial simulation is being trained to walk all right so there are very different algorithms quite different algorithms in reinforcement learning but all of them follow a basic approach is that there is an agent there is an environment and based on the interaction with the environment and you know a fitness function this the actions are being taken by the agent and this works well as well i mean you can see that you know on the right uh, you know the machine learned to play pacman or some other game you know this is uh, your uh, so this is all machine driven is not uh, 
uh, no human is involved there. So how do we model, how can we improve upon artificial neural networks in this way? So what we do is the agent here is the, you know, in the, in the bottom left case is the humanoid. I suppose I generate hundred random artificial neural networks. I gave for one instance, the first neural network control of this agent. And I, I see what steps it takes and I see how well it's performing. If it's not performing good, I say that it is not, this performance is lacking. If, so, if uh, neuro, I, I give the second one, you know, control of this humanoid and, and he starts to take baby steps. And I say that this, uh, artificial neural network is better than the other artificial neural network. So that's the basic process behind this. But we cannot keep on generating random neural networks and training them for fitness. So there are other algorithms that actually do that. So again, we take inspiration from human beings as usual, and we go back to genetic algorithms. All right. So, I mean, I don't want to, uh, you know, go very deep into genetic algorithms, but very, very, very simple case I'll try to explain here. So these are just two vectors, okay, DNA1 and DNA2. So genetic algorithm, basics of genetic algorithm is crossover and mutation. So what you do is you take part of this DNA1 and append it to DNA2. You just swap them and you take DNA2, and you uh, paste it in DNA1. So at this step, again, these are different DNAs. All right, so this is crossover. The other step is mutation. So by the way, each bit here in the DNA represents a single gene. You can flip, as soon as you flip, one to zero or zero to one, that is called a mutation. All right, so this is, Genetic Algorithms 101. This is the basics of genetic algorithms. So what we do is we model our artificial neural network, hundreds of artificial neural networks, each as a vector, and we do crossovers and mutations. So now I have a bag of genetic, you know, DNAs. So what do I do? I send the neural network to do perform the action, and then I evaluate the fitness. And this works. It's, it's not just what I'm saying, it actually works. Uh, and you can see, and if, if done properly, it can yield to really, really interesting results. So what's happening? Why do we do that? The thing is, we are not at all training a neural network from data. The problem with neural networks is, they take thousands of iterations to learn something. We are just manually swapping the weights or changing the weights and then releasing it in the environment and then checking the fitness. So the computation cost is very low as compared to traditional deep learning approach. So if you just want to see an example of this and if, if done properly, you can actually see this. So there is a safe, so the goal here is actually to reach the top left corner. And these are live simulations. So you have safe mutations and your normal mutations. And on the top left, you actually go there, they reach there. Another, uh, you know, if a different, uh, you know, what should I say, paradigm than genetic algorithms is neural architecture search. And, uh, what neural architecture search does is it uses a neural network to actually search for the best neural network itself. So, I mean, this is the closest we can come to implementation of uh, such evolutionary searches. And we have Google Cloud AutoML as one of, uh, you know, uh, I mean, people might have worked here on that. So that is a neural architecture search. We have Amazon SageMaker and Azure Machine Learning as well. I'm going to come to the core of the topic now, uh, which is novelty search. And it is the most intriguing concept in machine learning I have ever witnessed to date. So 
all right so novelty search all right so novelty search says abandon the objective completely abandon your objective function you will not optimize for anything all right so how do we reach our goal you know how do we actually uh, you know make progress so novelty search does not reward objective the objective of novelty search is if a population is simply different than the other population a little bit it's just performing a little bit better or not even better it's just performing different than the previous one it will reward it all right that's what novelty search is all about the basis of novelty search is that sometimes we as human beings do not know what is the best objective function to reach a goal so coming back to the example of a robot trying to walk all right so if we take our normal objective objective function driven approach and you know that thing will see that uh, the humanoid is falling over and it will discard that approach but novelty search will reward it it will say that it was standing and now it's falling so i'm going to reward it and it will make progress that way the thing is as we know in humans and as we keep on saying to learn to walk you should know how to fall first and that is why so the objective function driven approach might learn how to walk in say 10000 iterations but novelty search does the same thing because it rewarded falling there might eventually be like in 10 iterations you might reach to walking instead of 10000 iterations so that's what the basis of uh, novelty search is all about and i'm going to show you some clips or show you some videos on how this works it's it's really really interesting and uh, you know so here uh, you know on the left we have our agent the blue one and our goal is to reach this green dot here and on the left what you can see is that uh, is going to be an objective function approach while this one on the right is going to be a novelty based approach so i'm just going to click on this and you see that this fitness based approach will never ever reach the target because it's not able to optimize further while the novelty based approach will scan almost the whole space and uh, similarly uh, you know there are the things we i mean you guys can explore it on your own but uh, i like to conclude the talk here but i just want to leave you guys with something which is just my personal opinion here so i feel that you know novelty search is the mathematical representation of a phenomena that we keep witnessing in our day to day lives like so you might think that you are going on a wrong path in your life or you know it's not correct but it might actually be the most optimal way to reach there and you never know about it and that is why this algorithm is so so crazy for me so, i mean in in my as as far as i'm concerned so and you might think you know that you are just a speck of dust uh, you know floating inside a galaxy inside the universe and you know you are just average or something wrong with you but you might be a very important link even in your own legacy in your fa family's legacy and even possibly in the human species so i just like to conclude here with uh, saying that do not stop if you hit a snag keep moving forward because even if it seems that you are stuck somewhere you don't know that the next step might actually be where you actually want it to end up